Hello coders, in this video I'm going to take a look at a problem students ask me about every year which is the bomber man leaving bombs that explode in all four directions if possible with that sort of effect and the explosions get stopped by walls. Uh, this can be a hard problem for a beginner. I'm going to give you one way here and what it uses is it uses instance IDs, it uses alarms and uh, that's really it. And so if you already know about instance IDs, uh, it's sort of an essential one for here. But here we go. So the first thing I've already coded, I've already coded the player dropping the bomb. So that's in step here. If the space bar is pressed, drop a bomb. When the bomb ends up being created, it right away turns on an alarm that's going to go off in 90 steps. Okay. When that alarm goes off, here's the first a uh, big, big chunk of code that in part two video I actually reduced to become very small. But just to keep it easier, what I do, let's just focus on making the first piece of fire to the right of the bomb. So what I want the bomb to say is I want the bomb to look 32 pixels to the right of it. And so you'll see here I'm using the place meeting script. So if not place meeting, 32 pixels to the right of me, at my Y height, a block, then that means the space is block free. I can make a fire piece there. So that's exactly where I make a fire piece. I create a fire at 32 pixels to the right of me. Now it's important I remember the ID of that fire that I just created. This is going to be key in my little system here. I'm now going to tell the fire to remember three things. I want this piece of fire to remember that it's a fire piece that's moving rightward, okay, going to the right, increasing its X. So what I've done, and I'll just pop out of here for a second, is I've given every fire piece in its create event, I've given every fire piece a DX and a DY variable. This is going to remember how far each next fire piece should be moving. So if it's 32 when it gets set, then this one should be moving x plus 32. If the dy is negative 32, then the y value is going to be changing by negative 32 and going up. And so you'll see here for the piece I had originally done, okay, in that bomb alarm, the piece going to the right, since I'm making it go rightward, the dx is 32 and the change in the y is 0. This count variable, you're going to see how it's used, it's keeping track that this is sort of three fire pieces left to make. And as the fire pieces create each other, this variable is going to drop down to two, to one, to zero. And when it hits zero, fire will not make any more fires. Okay. Now, I do this also to the left side of the bomb. So I'm checking to the left. I create one to the left. And notice the DX for this one. That fire piece, right, FID, is going to remember negative 32, it's going to remember 0, and it also remembers 3. Similar, I do below and above. And like I said, I'm going to make this much shorter in part 2 of the video. I'll put all this into just one simple loop. Okay, now that the bombs made, or sorry, the fires are made, I destroy the bomb. So the bomb's gone. Let's see what the fire does. So when we get to the fire, and we had create, You'll see I have my variables. Now it may say 0, 0, 0, but those all get set. So they won't stay 0, right? They've got set to 32 and 0 and 3 for the right piece. Now here's my alarm. Alarm 0, 4. This alarm is going to be the one I use to trigger making the next fire piece going in the same direction, right? So if this piece of fire was currently trying to move to the right, Alarm zero will make another piece going to the right. If this is a fire piece going up, then alarm zero is going to attempt to make a fire piece going up as long as it's wall free. So the way this works is the bomb is now out of the picture. The fire makes more fire in the same direction that it's going. Alarm one, this is just to destroy the fire. So every fire piece will just destroy itself in 30 steps. So you can see alarm one here is very simple. It's just instance destroy. Which leaves us really to the whole system of fire creating fire. So, 
Fire is created. Alarm zero is on. And very shortly, four steps later, alarm zero goes off. Now here's the magic. If you haven't done anything with instance IDs before and variables and instances, this will probably confuse you a little. Um, you know, you have to go learn that stuff. But here we go. If count is bigger than zero, so remember the count for our first fire piece we made was set to three. And not meeting, and here's the key, our fire piece is trying to check if the location just to the side of it, right, the next 32 pixels over or above or below, is going to be block free, not meeting a block. So if we pretend this was our fire moving to the right, dx was 32. So this fire piece is checking at its x plus another 32, its y plus 0 if there's a block. If it's free of a block, it goes in the if statement and does it, and it makes another fire piece at that location. 32 pixels over, 0 pixels up and down, so to the right. And then this is the way it keeps it going. That fire piece you just made here, the new one, so the second fire piece, its ID is FID. I tell its DX variable, which is going to be zero by default, I tell it to be the same as this fire pieces. So it's going to get its DX set to 32. I tell its DY variable to be equal to this fire variable's DY. So what happens in the end is, Basically, it's like a little clone of the fire piece, the same variables for dx and dy. It's just in a different location, right? It's 32 pixels over. And the last one is important, so this eventually ends. I tell this new fire piece's count variable to be equal to this fire piece's count variable less one. So this one, the second one made, won't be set to three, It'll be set to 3 minus 1, which is 2. The next fire piece that that fire piece makes will be set to 1. And then the next one will be set to 0. And you can see here my condition. The fire piece only continues this cycle in its alarms if the count is bigger than 0. Well, because every time I make a new fireplace, fireplace, fire piece, the count goes down by 1. I will eventually hit zero and it'll stop. And that's really it. That's sort of the cycle, right? Now remember that this has also been triggered by the bomb. The bomb made, I'll just go back to the bomb again. It made a fire piece going to the left as well. DX was negative 32. That fire piece runs the exact same code. It's created. Its DX has been set to negative 32. It's count to three. Its alarm goes off. It goes in here. It says, is my count bigger than zero? Yeah. Is the place negative 32 free of a block? Maybe, maybe not. Let's say it is. If it is, it makes another fire at that location, gives it the same DX, gives it the same DY, and reduces its count um, to be one less than this guy's. So if this one was three, this guy gets two. And that's really it. And hit zero and it ends. You can see the overall effect here when you run it is it's not the best looking thing because I just chose the default game maker graphics, but it does work. Right? When I make these bombs. And a couple seconds later they go off. And obviously the speed is a little slow, right? And if you choose a better fire graphic, this is gonna look better. But it's perfect. And like we said, the if statement only happens if There's no walls in the way. So you only get the flames occurring, right, when things are perfect. So pretty good. That's really it. Now, that was a lot of code. The part of the code I don't like here is basically in the bomb. Where is it here? In the bomb, in the alarm. This is huge. Oh, I copy-pasted, basically changed a few numbers four times. There has to be a way to make this a little more efficient. 
And there's also a way to make this a little more efficient. This was sort of done for my students so they could get a grip on, you know, what spots I'm checking, dx and dy. There's a way to do this with just sort of one variable. And we involve sine and cosine because there is a pattern here. Basically, I'm going 0 degrees. I'm going 9 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and that's it. So there has to be a way to use it. So in my next video that follows us up, I'm going to replace this code with a much, much shorter version. So check that one out if you think you're okay with sines and cosines. Thanks for watching. I hope that gave you some ideas. Um, go and mod that away and have fun with it.